Hello everybody. Today we're going to walk through the, uh, the setup and interface between the Precision Time PTS 900 system and an OES scoreboard controller. So you can see here we have our OES controller and our base station. So let's talk through of what ports we're going to be interfacing with on the back of the OES scoreboard. So with a standard OES controller with the classic uh, shot clock switch that basically has one reset button, we will plug into remote one via port one on the base station. So we can go ahead and do that. So you should have a five pin in connector with a three pin XLR. And so that will be the primary connection that will toggle the clock. So get that into port one, the five pin in, the three pin XLR into remote one. And we can hit start and stop on the base station. And if you look closely here at the time on the OBS controller, you can see that we run when we hit green and red when we hit stop. Okay, so everything is working properly. If for some reason you're in a situation where the clock toggles backwards, you can go into the settings, clock configuration, and the SSR switches four and five, you, if they're off, switch them to on. And that will make the clock uh, run the correct direction if it is running backwards when you do this initial setup. Okay, so now that we're plugged into remote one, then the shot clock would go into remote two. Now, however, a lot of the new uh, OES controllers, and even some that uh, because of the changes in the rules, for example, um, where now an offensive rebound may reset to a different shot clock value than the full value. Um, OES is now coming out with this uh, revised shot clock con controller, which you see has actually has two reset buttons on it, in addition to the on-off switch. Okay, so what they have done is now they are using both remote one and two um, to to manage this second reset button on uh, within their controller. But what they've done to accommodate us is they've created this pigtail. And if you can see here on this pigtail, it's labeled PTS. Or if for some reason you're running uh, a game and not using PTS, your remote uh, game clock hand switch would plug into this uh, pigtail here. So, um, in that case, the uh, cables should be re uh, labeled remote 1, remote 2. And so let's get these into the right, um, the right ports. This is remote 1. Remote 2. And now the PTS pigtail. So you notice the pigtail is female, uh, accommodates the male XR, XLR connections. We plug this in. And now we go back to running the clock. And you see everything is running correctly. One important thing to mention in regards to OES, if you are using this new shot clock hand switch that um, is using both of the remote one and two ports, uh, because this was an add-on to OES after this uh, the ISC 9000 controller was developed, um, in this situation to support having both reset buttons, the horn button through this remote is disabled. So that means the horn button on precision time will no longer be functional. But again, it's a function of uh, the OES side, not because of uh, precision time. So just keep that in mind that you will now have to uh, uh, blow in the subs and uh, etc. through the um, horn button on the OES controller. Now, as far as the data connection goes, so we can see the timestamp. Um, Everybody should have received this uh, DB9Y cable. Now, because the, um, the pinouts on the data, you can see the game out DB9 connector here, which we're going to use, that's a mail out. What we have found works successfully is if we actually use the two female ends 
one going into game out as so get this right direction and then using the other female end which makes it look backwards but everything is functional um, into COM1 on the base station okay and now when we hit start and stop everything is running and if I have the shot clock on, you can see here now um, the shot clock uh, is running. You can see we just ran three seconds off. Uh, we hit reset, and it resets back to uh, 24 seconds. I believe we have the NBA settings here uh, working on this uh, OES controller. So that's basically... Um, the, the two main connections that are required to interface precision time with an OES controller, uh, get the complete package with seeing the timestamp, and then um, just to follow up on the data cable, then you have the mail um, and available still then to uh, support DV Sports or broadcast as needed uh, with the uh, data coming out of the OES port. For any additional questions, about the contents of this presentation, please use the contact information shown above. We thank you again for your support of Precision Time.